Britannia, Britannia rule the waves. Britons never, never, never will be slaves. Ah yes, Final Fantasy XIII, often hailed as the nail in the series' coffin, but is that a description the game truly deserves? After leaving the game to gather dust since the release, I went back to and completed this installment in the franchise to ask if it really was an abomination. The issues have been beaten to death. Linear corridors posing as level design, the lack of side quests and exploration, and incredibly annoying characters fighting in a simplified battle system making a recipe for disaster. On top of this, there's a plot that goes nowhere and ultimately leaves you confused about your end goal. We'll start with that plot. At first, it seemed relatively simple. You're Lightning, a soldier whose sister has become what's known as a Lassie, and you're on your way to save her. You meet up with your sister, Sarah's fiancé, called Snow, and some other characters who all have their own reason for being there. Sarah turns to Crystal, and you all become Lassie in the process. Oh dear. Now you want to find a way to turn Sarah back into her human form, but being a Lassie means you've been given a focus, an objective, by something called a foul sea. If you don't complete that proper sharpish, you will become a thief, basically a mindless monster. And this being a video game, of course, your focus isn't exactly clear to you either. This would have been absolutely fine as a plot. Figure out your focus, return Sarah to her human form, job done. The game decides to make it too complicated though, and throws in a load more characters with various subplots, and also decides that your brave heroes are so fickle they change their goal and direction every five seconds, and even split off into smaller groups as a result. EA. Honestly, by the end of Disc 3, one room away from the final boss, I still wasn't entirely sure what my end goal was, what I was fighting for, or what proceeding from point A to point B would actually achieve. And due to this plot, you're forced to use very specific parties of two throughout the entire first two discs of the game, so there's no avoiding those throwaway characters you just plain don't care about. Zaz, this means you. It also means you're forced to play at the pace the game wants you to, and it goes a long way in explaining the linearity of the maps. It also means once you've left an area, that's it. Kiss that place goodbye, you ain't coming back. The game also stops you from leveling up your characters past certain points until you pass set plot points, which can be very frustrating, especially seeing as you can't unlock the final stage of the level up board, the Crystarium, until after you've beaten the final boss. But you know what? The game does have one saving grace. I call it Grand Pulse. Grand Pulse is the first area of Disc 3, and also where the game finally stops holding your hand. A large, non-linear map to explore? Check. Tons of grinding areas, treasures to collect, and side quests to complete? Check. The ability to form your own party? Check. These are all basic Final Fantasy concepts that should have been available from the get-go, but it feels so much sweeter when you've been denied them for so long. Grand Pulse even lets you teleport across multiple areas of its map, including the wilderness you start out in, a tower, and a snowy, deserted village. In Chapter 13, before preparing for the final boss, you can even warp back to Grand Pulse and another location on Disc 3, Eden Hall, to power level for the final confrontation. This is also why all my gameplay footage is from Grand Pulse, Eden Hall, and Spoiler's Cradle. You'll also meet enemies that will challenge you and force you to do something other than constantly mash A, as some reviewers have complained. Admittedly, it's a damn long time coming, but you'll actually use the battle system properly, switching roles mid-combat and actually enjoying the streamlined, fast pace, instead of just constantly attacking. That is, until you level up and become so powerful you can just spam attack again. There is a tactical depth to the fights, and it relies on simple timing and having purpose-made squads. When you then realize Disc 3's grinding and side quests allow you to buy and find components to upgrade your weapons and accessories with, an entirely new addiction grabs hold. 
There is an inherent issue with only being able to control the team leader, though. Not only is it a case of if the team leader dies, it's game over, regardless of any Phoenix Downs or any other party members still being alive, but it causes endless frustration when your medics start healing the guys with the most HP instead of the guy who's half dead, and your saboteur won't cast the debuff you'd really like that enemy to have inflicted right now. Strangely enough, you will adapt to that and get used to it, but why should you have to? Unfortunately, Final Fantasy XIII requires 20 hours of your patience before it gets any good, and even when it does, it's still an okay game at best. I can see why the game is linear for two discs straight. The plot dictates it. Clearly the writers want me to care about these characters, and think that what they've put forward is a meaningful piece of literary genius. But it really makes no sense, and you're never quite sure who you're fighting for, or even what you're fighting against. Yeah, the characters are confused about this themselves, and that's partly the point, but for a player to engage in their role as these people, after all, this is a role-playing game, they need some motivation which just never arrives. What saddens me is that there's a good game in here somewhere. I don't think it deserves all the negative criticism it receives, and I honestly enjoyed this more than Final Fantasy XII. XII's battle system means I never made it more than about four hours in, but that's another topic for another day. I reckon if this had come out without the Final Fantasy logo on it, if people had gone in not expecting certain FF traditions, it might have been given more favourable reviews. Still, I'm not saying this is a great game. It's merely a mediocre one that takes far too long to get interesting, and is made out to be a hell of a lot worse than it actually is. If you want a middle-of-the-road game that will eat up around 50 hours of your time, go ahead. If you just want to have every Final Fantasy ever, go ahead. If you're looking for a solid, old-school, turn-based affair, look to Lost Odyssey, as Final Fantasy XIII will only disappoint you and incite rage. As always, this has been Afro Blue. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.